just so you can cook along with me. The first thing I want to do before I do anything else is I've got my meat grinder to grind up my chuck roast. And what I want to do is I've got some water in here and I put the business end in the water. And I want to throw about two or three cups of ice in there just, just so that it can start to chill out. Okay, and the reason for this is because if this is cold, right, what happens is you get less stickage, less moving around of the meat when it's actually going through the grinding process. So that's the first thing you want to do before you do anything else. Hopefully, what you have is chuck roast and some pork shoulder Boston butts. I'll give you exact recipe numbers here in a second. I want to pull my meat out. That's what she said. Okay, so this is a three pound chuck roast. We're not going to use all of this. We're just going to use, give or take, around half, which is about a pound and a half of actual chuck roast. I had this in the freezer for about an hour just so it could firm up. Again, that helps with the grinding process if you're going to go through that whole process. If you're going to use pre-ground ground beef, I would go for an 85-15 blend, so 85 meat, 15% fat. I think that just gives you like the best flavor profile. And then the pork, let's go over here. Okay, the pork, what I've got is, same thing, I threw this in the freezer for about an hour. This is just ground pork. What you wanna do if you can, I, I couldn't find any today, but what you wanna try to do is get yourself Boston butts or pork shoulder, something with, you know, something that looks like it's got about 15% fat on it. So 85% meat, 15% fat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use half this package. It's a one pound package. So I'm gonna use a half a pound of ground pork and then I'm gonna use one and a half pounds of ground chuck roast, which we're gonna take over the grinder here in a second. I'm gonna set this aside here just for a minute so I can grab this bowl. Okay, another thing you wanna start getting to go or going in the process is kind of lay out all your stuff that you're gonna need for your meatballs. So today's tools I'm using are the Victorinox eight inch breaking knife, right? This is what's gonna help me to cut through that chuck roast to get some chunks to be able to put into the grinder. I've got myself a pair of OXO Good Grips tongs. These are the eight inch, nine inch version, I believe. This is gonna help when we're frying up the meatballs in this Tremontino Dutch, half Dutch oven, right? So it's not a full Dutch, it's a half Dutch, if that makes any sense. You could use a regular old cooking pot if you have one. These are ideal, Dutch ovens are ideal because we're gonna go into the oven with this later on. Then I've got a Victorinox, I've had this thing forever. This is a 10 inch, or sorry, this is a 12 inch Victorinox chef's knife. This is just gonna come in use all around. Get yourself a set of good measuring spoons. I'll put links to all this stuff down below in the description so you can see all that. You'll need a one cup measuring cup to measure some stuff out. You're gonna need, this is a just regular old spatula. This will help me mix. Sometimes you use my hands, sometimes you have to use your hands, but to mix the meatballs with the meat and the other stuff, I just like using this to start and then I'll go in there with my hands and just get down and dirty with it. Okay, in terms of ingredients, let's talk about the meatballs first. So we've got, remember, we've got our one and a half pounds of chuck roast, right? Then I've got my half pound of ground pork. If I had pork shoulder or if the market had pork shoulder today, I would have bought that. But anyways, I'm just going to use the ground stuff. So half a pound ground pork. Try to go for the 85-15 if you can. And then a, a pound and a half of chuck roast. Try to get something that looks like it's got about 15% fat on it. And remember, you want to put these, both of these in the freezer for about an hour before you start this whole process. You could put the grinder itself with the auger and the attachment in the freezer for at the same amount of time totally works you just want to get it cold that's why i use the ice in the water okay ingredients for the meatballs are going to be the meat then i've got a cup of breadcrumbs you could use any bread this is the sourdough that i make so i like to you know keep things personal but if you want to use sourdough bread you want to use italian bread you want to use a french loaf you want to use a baguette whatever you want to use you could use pumpernickel you could use rye i mean get creative but what you want to do is you want to measure out, give or take, around two cups of cubes, right? So cubes as you cube the bread up, throw that in a toaster oven, right, for about, give or take, about, I'd say 10 minutes at 350. Those cubes will then go into your food processor, blender, whatever you got. 
blend them up until they come to around this consistency, which is pretty like fine to chunky and you get some bits and pieces here and there. It's okay if they're browned like this, more flavor. The darker that, as long as they're not burned, but I find that the darker the browning, the better flavor you get. So one cup of breadcrumbs is gonna go into my bowl, right? And I know that that's one cup because I do this all the time. Now, what gives it the tanginess, the tangy meatballs, buttermilk. Secret restaurant trick. You're learning all this stuff here. I worked in the restaurant industry for years. But anyways, here's your secret trick is buttermilk. You want to measure out one cup of this. This is just Knudsen's, good old-fashioned Knudsen's. And you kind of want to get this process going a little earlier in the process just so that the breadcrumbs have a chance to soak. I know I see a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put their meat right in the bowl and they'll put the bread comes in and they'll put everything else in. The milk never has a chance to do its thing with the breadcrumbs. So put the buttermilk in while you put in the breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna do one cup of buttermilk, give or take, dump that in. We're gonna give this a little stir here in a second. I'm gonna go throw this back in the fridge. Don't want to spoil. What can you use this for? I drink it straight, believe it or not. You know, bodybuilding, athletic stuff, old fitness trick from the 1970s. They used to drink buttermilk, no joke. <laughs> Look it up, do your research. Okay, so here's a good chance to use my little rubberized spatula. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix this, right? So I'm just trying to get some of that buttermilk incorporated into the breadcrumbs so that they have a chance to soak. And we're actually gonna let this soak for a while. What you can do now is you can start adding some of your seasoning, but be careful what you add in here. So what I'm gonna do is I have some, where is it, paprika. I want to use about a half a teaspoon of this and about a teaspoon of salt, right? This is Himalayan pink salt. You could use table salt if you want to, but I kind of like the Himalayan pink stuff. So what I want to do is I want to use a half a teaspoon of my paprika, right? And this is just smoked paprika. This kind of gives the meatballs like a nice smoky flavor, almost like a, a deep earthy you know, kind of undertone to them, like a really good woodsy, I don't know, kind of a flavor. So I'm gonna pour in a half a teaspoon of this. I'll put this, I'll put it into a little shot glass. And then, sorry about that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one teaspoon of salt. So two pounds of meat, one teaspoon of salt. Give or take, you wanna put 1% salt for meat. And it can be a little bit over that, it's no big deal. So let's say you're doing this in grams, right? And you're gonna do, what is that? Two pounds of meat is basically like a little less than a kilo. You you would want to put around 10 grams of salt, give or take, for two pounds of meat. Give or take, right? We're just ballparking here. So let me go ahead and use, like I said, one teaspoon of salt. That's going to go into a little shot glass over here. Okay, so all this flavor town is going to go into the buttermilk, right? We're going to mix, 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 mix. So now I've got my flavor and salt going into this buttermilk mixture. And all we're doing is just, we're just trying to soak up the breadcrumbs. Okay, why do I use breadcrumbs and not eggs? I don't use eggs in my meatballs, by the way. Okay, just imagine the meat is like a big chunk, right? So you have big chunk, big chunk, big chunk, like big circles, right? You need something to fill in the void between those circles that's gonna kind of hold everything together. So if you have a big circle, if you have a big circle here and you have a big circle here and you put them together, you need something to kind of fill these little gaps. That's what the breadcrumbs and the buttermilk is for. So a little bit of science action going on here. Okay, so this I'm gonna leave aside. What I could do is pepper. Love this pepper mill. This is, uh, I forgot what this thing's called, the Magnus or something like that, Magnum, I can't remember. But uh, I've got it set to like, almost like a medium fine. Nah, not medium fine, I'd say like a medium, just a medium. You'll see here in a second. I'm just gonna put in like a couple twists. You want about that much, which is about, give or take around, I'd say about a quarter teaspoon or so. You don't want your meatballs to be too hot. If you wanna add any heat, do it in the sauce, which we are gonna do later with some red pepper flakes. So that's gonna come later on. But in terms of just sticking with the meatballs, here we go, we got this going. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get some flat leaf parsley from my handy dandy fridge. How much do you want? You want, give or take around like a bunch. As you can see here, I've got about a bunch. I'm not gonna use the stems, I'm just gonna use the leaves. So here's where my chef knife comes in handy. 
let's put this stuff aside. Sorry about that. Okay, so flat leaf parsley. What I want to do is I just want to get the leaves and I'm scraping. So this is my 12 inch chef knife, right? I'm trying to get as more leaves than I am stems, let's say. And it's okay if you get a few of the stems in. We're just going to chop them up really, really fine. So this is all I'm doing. I'm just scraping and pulling, pulling and scraping. I'd say that's about right. Okay. That's going to go in my trash. Hold on a second. Oi! I like, to I like to clean as I go, by the way. I find things just come out a little more easier and organized that way. So, cut these off. Throw those away. So you've got about that much parsley, right? How much parsley is that? If I take out my handy-dandy measuring cup again, which is still full of buttermilk, you get around, around like, let's say, half a cup of just loose, maybe three quarters of a cup of loose. You could put a little more parsley in if you want to, make it a full cup, but I find this is enough. That's all I need. Okay, so there's our flat leaf parsley. That's kind of now coated in buttermilk. Hey, we're cooking. Everything's moving. Okay, so now we're going to chop. So basically what I do is I grab a big bundle like this, big pile. Sorry about the shakiness in the camera. Plus not this new camera rig. Okay, so all we're going to do is just chop, 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 chop. Right? I'm curling my fingers. Curling my fingers like so, so I don't cut the tips off. <laughs> right? Very sharp knife. Usually I sharpen after every use after every use, just so it's ready to go for the next use. So then you just want to come back in, re-chop, right? So chop, 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 chop. Then what I'll do is I'll scrape back the edge of the knife. Be careful around the edges, obviously. Kind of drag together. You could use the back of the knife if you don't want to dull the actual blade, which is really the way you should do it. So make another, let's say another hedge here, another little mound, and chop again. Remember, the finer this is, the smoother the texture is going to be in the meatballs. I kind of like a little chunky, like a little chunky and chewy. I want to know that there's some texture going on in my meatballs. But I'd say for now, this is about right. Okay, so again, you could give it one more chop if you wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and use my knife and dump it into the buttermilk, breadcrumb, paprika, salt, pepper mix. Right, so there we go. There's that. Okay, give this a quick stir. Hope you guys are liking this new video style. Anyways, if you are liking this new video style, hit the like button. <laughs> Go ahead and comment in the comment section down below. So as you can see, my breadcrumbs are kind of turning pasty, which is perfect. That's kind of what I want. I know that the bread now is absorbing that buttermilk. Remember, to make the breadcrumbs, you could use any bread you want to. Uh, you could even use something like this. This is what? Country white sourdough from... I got this at Ralph's. It was on sale, I think, too, right? I don't know. This one was on sale. You can use anything like this. Just cut this up into cubes, about two cups worth, because then after you grind it down, it'll end up being one cup, right, of ground breadcrumbs. But anyways, take your fresh bread, cut it up into cubes, like little one-inch cubes, throw those into an oven, like a little toaster oven. Ten minutes at 350 degrees will get them nice and toasty. Put that back. So 10 minutes, 350 degrees to get them nice and toasty, and then throw them into a food processor or whatever you got. And then you can even use a Ziploc bag and like a good, you know, round object to kind of roll them, hit them, just break them up. But you do want to get them as fine as we did get them. So anyways, we're at this point now. This is looking good. We're going to hang on. I'm going to put my salt away for now. Okay, we're going to start grinding, I believe. Okay, so let's go over there. So... I've got my grinding attachments and all that. I'm gonna go over to my grinder. So this should be a pretty chill 38-ish degree right now, but pretty chill on this. And then I'm gonna bring my, actually let me, yep. I'm gonna bring my chuck roast and my pork over. There you go, chuck roast and pork, right? Remember this was sitting in the freezer for about, I'd say about like, uh, what is that? About an hour or so. Let's cut this. Okay. Coming back over. This side. So what I want now is I just want to use half of this. Right? This is pretty nice and frozen. If you notice, I did put it on a rack so that any drippings go down there. But I literally just want half. I want about a pound and a half of ground chuck roast. So I'm going to cut through with my chef knife. And then now, this goes back in the fridge because I'm not using this. In there 
Okay, now what I want to do is I can use my breaking knife, right? You're going to get nice smoother cuts to just basically cube this up. So I just want to make it small enough so that it'll fit through the opening of the grinder and leave some texture to it as, that as it goes through the grinder. You're going to get some nice ground, you know, chuck roast going on. So what I want to do is just forward and back. One, This thing works like a dream. So just go forward. Sometimes you can go all the way through just in one cut. Go forward again. Remember, I'm curling my fingers so I don't lose my fingers. But we're going to go through again. So through and down. One cut. These Victorinox breaking knives are just amazing. So now what, now what you've got here is chuck steaks, right? And you want all this fat. All this fat is flavor town right here. So you definitely want all this fat in there. Definitely going to use all that. So what I'm going to do now is maybe stack up a couple of these. I'm going to go lengthwise. Same thing, just down and through, down and through. Down and through. I would say these chunks are going to end up being about an inch or so in size. So as I come down, as I come down, as I come down. Great. So each one of these chunks, give or take, is like, you know, this one's a little bit longer. But give or take, it's around about one inch or so in cube size. So I'm going to push these aside for a sec. Grab another couple pieces, maybe a few pieces. Keep all the fat. Remember, the fat is flavor town. That's what you want. So down, I'm cutting. This breaking knife is just doing all the work. I'm barely pushing through. It's just that's how sharp this damn knife is. Okay. Cutting through. Now we're going to twist. 